I'm Kathleen Henderson from Roots and Boots and I'm going to share a little bit about how my family and I got started in raising, growing so much of our own food. As you may know, my family grows about 70% of our own food. We raise pastured beef, pastured pork, pastured poultry to include chickens and turkeys. We also have ducks for eggs and chickens for eggs. We have goats for milk, dairy goats, and we have extensive vegetable gardens and orchard berry patches. And so we are growing a lot of our family's own food, but we didn't start out this way. So I thought I would share a little of the backstory of how we started growing food, where we started, and how we kind of added more and more along the way to get to where we are today. And also some of the reasons behind that. I'll back up to 2010 when my second son was born, my middle son. By the time he was about a year old, uh, we were noticing some health issues. Well, I should say we had been noticing some health issues for myself for a while, including multiple miscarriages, some secondary fertility issues, and I had a really rough pregnancy with that second son. I should add, after having a totally normal, healthy pregnancy with my first son, there was something that triggered what we came to realize was hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's for me after the birth of my first son is when things started going downhill for me. And then by the time my second son was born, I was really not feeling great. And so I finally, after not receiving many helpful answers from mainstream medical practitioners, I sought the care and the advice of a holistic MD who was so helpful to me that involved the whole process of removing gluten and refined sugars from our diet for a while. I was also avoiding other things like dairy and eggs just for a finite period of time until we got things narrowed down and figured out and got my body back to a better place. And I began taking thyroid medication and under his care and his advice and with all of these lifestyle changes, I we saw a very quick improvement actually it was kind of remarkable my husband was amazed and i was thankful so as a part of all these lifestyle changes that we were making with my health in mind but also the health of our whole family we began focusing much more on real foods and emphasizing real foods whole foods fresh foods local foods and we found ourselves buying a lot of foods from local farms and that does get pricey i know and so we began to ask ourselves or say to ourselves, you know, we live on these three acres and I'll, I was already gardening a little bit. I've always loved to garden. I started out with perennials on my parents 20 acre farm in Pennsylvania as a teenager and young adult. And then after we got married in Texas, my husband and I, we started a tiny vegetable garden. By we, I mean, he helped me start it, but it was my garden. And I just loved it. And so the garden would get bigger every year. And so by the time my second son came along, we had a garden on a three acre property in Northern Virginia. And while I couldn't get out and do as much gardening during the seasons when I had little babies, over time between my husband and I, we continued to expand this garden and especially as I began to feel better and like got myself back, got my energy back and my life back and began to experiment with growing more types of things and more in quantity of the things that I was always gr already growing. So I was already growing tomatoes, you know, I began to grow more tomatoes and I began to wonder like, how can I save more of these tomatoes to last us all year? And that's when I started to learn how to can and I bought myself a dehydrator and started exploring, you know, ways of freezing and eventually fermenting. And, you know, one thing led to another, but it was all as a result of these health mysteries and health issues that I faced. And then the lifestyle changes that we were making. And then again, we started to wonder how much of this can we start to supply ourselves? And so then that's where the chickens came in. My husband, we like to joke that Greg never really had a hobby. The only thing he really loved to do that was his was watch sports on TV. But he just always kind of gravitated towards my hobbies. It was like, Kathleen likes to go antiquing. I'll go antiquing with Kathleen. Like, Kathleen likes to garden. I'll help her with the garden. That type of thing. But he had thrown around the idea of getting chickens for eggs. 
now that we were on this three acre property. And so for a really big birthday that he celebrated, my parents helped me surprise him with a small chicken coop. It's our OG chicken coop. We still have it and we still use it on the farm. And three mature laying hens. They were already laying eggs. So we had like instant backyard eggs. And my husband, Greg, was hooked. Everybody started calling him the chicken man. He loved raising chickens, like loved it. And so, you know, three chickens led to more chickens and it was just great. And then he began to wonder, since I already know how to raise chickens, laying chickens for eggs, I wonder what it would be like to add meat birds. I wonder if we could raise our own chicken for eating, for meat. And so he did that and he said, we'll do it one time and if we hate it, we won't do it again. If it goes well, we like it, then you know, we'll do it again, we'll add more. And so that's kind of been our whole like procedure for all of the things that we grow and raise on our farm is just a little bit at a time. And my husband is much better at that. He likes to say that I'm ready, fire, aim. And we're on the opposite end. He, if all the decisions were left up to him, like they would never get made because he drags his feet and like considers too many details and gets like analysis paralysis. So we're a good team, I guess. But if either of us is left to our own devices, I take on too, way too many things bite off more than I can chew, like do too much too fast. And he just like would never do anything. <laughs> so, so we kind of balance each other out and kind of uh, smooth out those rough edges of the other person. So he, you know, little by little was like, okay, let's add meat birds. And if we like it, let's add more meat birds. And then he said, I want to raise my own pork. And if you watched my previous video, you know, that's the point at which we said, okay, we need more land if we're gonna raise beef and pork and those kinds of things. So that's when we moved to the farm. That's the very, very, very nutshell version of, of that part of our story. But one thing was for certain, I did not want to be buying food at the grocery store. At least I wanted to majorly reduce our dependency on food from the grocery store. Food that is trucked in from who knows where, grown by who knows who, and you know, sprayed or contaminated with who knows what. And so we began this very deliberate journey towards trying to produce as much of our own food as possible and whenever possible for filling in the gaps of things that we couldn't grow or weren't growing enough of yet, you know, sourcing those locally, really looking to eat the best food possible. And that is what it boils down to for me is I want to feed my family the best food possible. And the best food possible is the food that is fresh because it was harvested recently, like nearby. For me, that's often like in my own yard. Um, for some people or for some things that I can't grow, that's like farms nearby or the farmer's market. I want it to grow nearby and be fresh. I want to know how it was grown. I want to make sure that it was grown to contain as many nutrients as possible because when you're trucking in produce from like California, I'm on the East Coast, you know, you're trucking it in from miles away, it's picked too early so that it can, you know, ripen as it is transported. Um, there are a lot of artificial things going on as far as like sprays to help the fruit look better or ripen faster or like make up for the fact that it was harvested early and not really at the time when it is most tasty to eat. So anyway, I just kind of went on this major quest to overhaul the sources of the foods that I was feeding my family. And so for us, that wound up including growing a lot of it ourselves so that I can know exactly how it's grown. It can be as fresh and tasty as possible and as nutrient packed as possible. And we can avoid as many contaminants or bad substances as possible because we are controlling all of the inputs. Our cattle only eats grass. Our pigs eat what pigs are supposed to eat and we're in control of that. You know, same for our chickens, our poultry. And I control the inputs in my garden. I never use any sprays or powders of any kind. Everything is done, what we like to say, beyond organically. And that was our goal. It didn't happen overnight, obviously. We had to add little by little. After we moved to the 20 acre farm, the first thing we added was pigs. So we were already gardening for veggies. We had 
some existing fruit trees on the farm and we added a lot more. We also added berries. And then we had the laying hens already. We were already doing meat birds. And then that first year we added the pigs plus fruit trees and every year the vegetable garden got bigger. And then the following year we added a few cows, steers, to raise for beef. And then I think it was the following year, it might have been a year and a half or two years later, we added dairy goats. That was a big thing to add to the farm. Um, because we looked around and we said, well, we're doing great on meat. We're raising beef, pork, chicken, turkey. We're doing great on vegetables. You know, the fruit is coming along. Fruit takes longer to reach, you know, production stage because the trees have to grow, the berry bushes have to mature and all of that. But um, one major gap in the food that our family is growing is dairy. We knew we were not ready to commit to a dairy cow and we may never be, who knows, but we thought, you know, goats might be manageable and we had our youngest son who really wanted goats and we had some good friends who actually breed the kind of goats that we were thinking about and they kind of got us hooked on the idea. We watched them do it and thought, okay, if they can do it, we can do it and they can be our like phone a friend hotline. <laughs> they, they can help us get started and, and be our experts that we can go to for troubleshooting and so we added the dairy goats. That's been a big adventure. Some of you have been watching me learn to make cheese via Instagram, etc. That really rounded out our diet. So now we grow vegetables, fruits, uh, multiple kinds of meats, eggs, and milk. And I like to say that if we had to survive without the grocery store, we could. Would we want to? No, because we still like to buy bananas and avocados, frankly, and coffee and chocolate and things like that. You know, I order in special flours and oils, like olive oil and avocado oil. Those are not things that we can or want to produce on our farm. Do I use those things regularly? Of course I do. But if I had to go without them, my family could still eat. We could still have meat, we could still have eggs, we could still have dairy and we could still have vegetables and fruits and you know we could survive well on that so anyway just to wrap up that was the driving force behind our decision to move to a farm which would allow us to grow even more of our family's own food basically we got hooked on real food on the benefits of real food and it was a part of my and our quest to feed our family as healthfully as possible with the best food possible you know the whole saying of know your farmer know your food i mean we took that you know a step further and we became the farmer and became the people growing the food so we really do know our food and we are the farmers and i'm just super passionate about growing as much of my family's own food as possible and growing it in the best way possible and so that is the driving force behind a lot of what you see me doing in the garden, a lot of what you see us doing on the farm, a lot of what you see me doing in the kitchen is really, really good food, healthful food to nourish our bodies. Mm -hmm.